I'm excited to show you my top five upgrades of the Pio Poly Magneto X 3D printer that have allowed me to print high temperature materials such as ABS. My upgrades are a combination of upgrades that Pio Poly offers and two of my own upgrades that you won't see anywhere else. I have a sixth bonus upgrade at the end of the video and you don't want to miss that. Hi, I'm Ken of Wrist Innovations and I just want to mention that I paid for my Magneto X with my own money. I received one of the first pre-order production units back in April and I have another video out that shows a step-by-step -step guide for setting up the Magneto X and my initial experience. That link is in the description below. If you're not familiar with the Magneto X, it's the world's first desktop 3D printer with a magnetic-based linear motor system, so no belts or pulleys. So I'm going to show you all five of my upgrades and then I'll show you various ABS parts that I have printed using the upgrades. So let's get started. Number one, the enclosure. Peel Poly offers an optional enclosure to upgrade your Magneto X that will allow you to print high temperature materials such as ABS, ASA, PC, and nylon. It consists of tinted acrylic panels that mount to the main frame of the printer. The features include two sets of doors in the front and right side for easy access. The separate top portion of the enclosure fully encloses the printer, so you can leave the LCD screen as it is in its original position, but there's a large gap in the acrylic door to clear the LCD screen. You can also move the LCD screen to the top of the enclosure and replace the top door panel with a full panel that fully encloses the printer, which is what I installed because I didn't like the gap in the other door design. As an added bonus, the enclosure helps reduce the noise from the printer. The price of the enclosure is $210. And here is how I assembled the enclosure. First, I attached the panels to the main body of the printer. If you have the optional jet stream fan, you need to install the left panels that have slots for the fan. If you don't have the jet stream fan, then just install the left panels that are solid. Then I assembled the top enclosure aluminum frame and then added the acrylic panels to the enclosure. Next, I installed the top enclosure connectors that will align the top enclosure to the main printer frame. Lastly, I installed the two top acrylic panels to the top enclosure. One of the things I noticed is that especially the top enclosure acrylic panels were only attached to the top, so they were very flimsy. I saw that there were some holes in the acrylic panels and threaded holes in the frame, so I assumed there were some sort of brackets that were missing from the kit. I contacted P.O. Poly and then they sent me some 3D files to print the brackets. I printed them using ABS and I ran my M3 tap in two of the holes. The brackets made a big difference in securing the acrylic panels to the top enclosure and the lower panels for the main printer frame as well. Now the only problem is that the tinted panels make it impossible to see inside the enclosure. So now let's take a look at my next upgrade. If you are working on a prototype project and you need some help, I have the answer for you. This brings me to the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. If you are working on any prototype projects, they can help you when you need a variety of parts. Besides making PCBs, they also offer CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and lots of different types of 3D printing, including metal printing. You just need to go on their website, upload your design, select the material and quantity you need, and you'll get an instant quote. Then they'll manufacture the parts and ship them right to your door. Give them a try, and I think that you will be amazed at what they can do for you. Check out PCB Way using the link below. Number two, let there be light. Pio Poly plans to have an optional LED bar available in the future, but in the meantime, I made it a priority to come up with my own LED lighting solution. I was inspired by the LED lighting upgrade from Jacardi that's on printables that I implemented for my Bamboo Lab X1 carbon printer. I designed an LED lighting frame is made up using four corner pieces and two middle pieces for the long side and short side of the enclosure. I used 3 16ths of an inch diameter by 1 and a quarter inch long stainless steel pins to connect the various LED lighting pieces together. 
Then I use the existing screws that hold the top enclosure together to hold the LED frame to the top enclosure. I attached an LED strip to the LED frame using the double-sided tape and hot melt adhesive. I also use the hot melt glue gun to glue the seams of the LED frame. The hot melt glue is used because the heat of the enclosure might cause the pressure sensitive adhesive to not hold the LED lighting strip sufficiently. I ran the power cord down the inside corner of the enclosure and through the bottom of the printer. The nice thing about this LED lighting is that it can be controlled using this remote control and it has three lighting levels. Links for the LED strip as well as the 3D print files for my LED frame are in the description below. Number three, the Jetstream parts cooling fan. Might. This is no parts cooling fan. Now this is a parts cooling fan. This is the optional Jetstream parts cooling fan from Peel Poly and it costs $50. It blows across the full width of the entire build plate. It's easy to install the Jetstream fan. You just need to attach it to the left side of the printer using four socket head cap screws. I ran the wiring down the inside of the printer and into the bottom of the printer. There is a connector cable labeled fan, so just connect the fan cable to the fan connector. You can test that the fan works by going to the fan screen on the LCD panel. Click the Jetstream fan to 100% and the fan should start spinning. I expected it to sound like a jet engine, but it's extremely quiet. You need to enable the Jetstream fan by going to the Orca Slicer, Basic Information, Accessory, Auxiliary Parts, Cooling Fan. My focus of testing for this video has been to print ABS, which does not normally use the Jetstream fan. So I need to run some additional testing using the Jetstream fan for PLA parts in a future video to confirm the effectiveness of the Jetstream fan. Number four, filament tubing routing. Pio Poly has the Teflon tubing freely flopping around within the printer. And in the past, I've had tubing get caught up in the XY axis during homing, which stopped the printer. They did come up with a small clip to mount to the axis, but I still didn't like how much the Teflon tubing was flopping around within the printer. I made a small change to this cover and I routed the Teflon tubing into the cable chase. I really like how the tubing is much more organized. Now, I don't know if Pio Poly would recommend this. However, I haven't seen any problems with my parts using this upgrade. Number five, the high flow hot end. The high flow hot end is another upgrade offered by Pio Poly. They offer a short hot end with a maximum flow rate of 35 cubic millimeters per second. A standard hot end with a maximum flow rate of 45 cubic meters per second. And that is what typically comes on the printer when you receive it. They also offer a long hot end with a maximum flow rate of 60 cubic millimeters per second. All of the hot ends include a 0.4 millimeter diameter nozzle. The printer comes with a standard hot end installed on the printer. And that's what I have been using for all of my prints. However, I decided to install a long melt zone hot end to see how it performs. It's fairly complicated to change the hot ends on the Magneto X. First, the easy part is to remove the filament from the hot end. Then remove the tool head housing. Then I remove the extruder by loosening two screws and then I support it so I wouldn't have to disconnect the cables. Then I remove the right parts cooling fan so I could trace the hot end cables to where they're connected on the print head board. I disconnected the two connectors and then I loosened three screws and I removed the hot end. The wiki doesn't mention this until the very end, but I found the next best time to also remove the left and right side parts cooling fans so you can adjust the left and right side fan mount module so they are in the lowest position for the long hot end. I also removed the hot end fan so I have better access to the hot end cables. Next I installed the long hot end using the same three screws. Then I routed the hot end heater and thermistor cables and connected them to the tool head board. The long hot end has actually two heater cables. Then I reinstalled the extruder. Next, I reattached the left and right parts cooling fans and the hot end fan. Lastly, I installed the tool head housing. I ran a maximum flow rate calibration test for the long hot end using the following parameters. Start at 20 cubic millimeters per second, end at 60 cubic millimeters per second, in increments of 0.5 cubic millimeters per second. I measured the height at which the layer lines deteriorated 
and it measured 45 millimeters. So I added that to the 20 millimeters for a total maximum flow rate of 65 cubic millimeters per second. I doubled the speed and acceleration of the ABS profile and as an example for a Benchy, the long melt zone hot end only improved the print time from 28 minutes to 24 minutes. I only ran a couple parts using the long melt zone hot end, so more testing needs to be done. Six, ABS print results. I loaded the ABS filament into the printer and then I ran numerous parts using Bamboo Lab ABS filament. 0.2 millimeter layer height, standard melt zone, hot end, and a 0.4 millimeter nozzle diameter. My first print was a Benchy, and then I printed all of the parts for this stealth heat set threaded insert press designed by Iconic Fab, which you can find on printables. Link is in the description below. Initially, I was having some warping problems, so I coated the build plate with the Vision Miner nanopolymer, and that worked like a champ. Some of the parts, such as the base plate, were quite large and thin, so I was very happy with the results. I will eventually publish a video on the assembly and operation of the Stealth heat set press, and when that's ready, that will be in the description below. Here's some more printing of ABS parts, and you can see how the filament tubing is working in the cable harness. Overall, I was happy with the quality of the ABS parts. Number seven, as a bonus, the time-lapse setup. Remember how to set up the time-lapse feature for the Magneto X. First, you need to have the Magneto X software version 1.1.3 or higher. Now, you can easily upgrade the firmware online, which I found to be much simpler than when I had to open up the electronics panel, pull out a micro SD card, load the new firmware, and then reinstall the micro SD card in the electronics PCB, which is what I had to do when I had to do a previous upgrade. Next, go on to the printer.config file, and on line seven, add include time-lapse config. Then in Clipper, you'll see a time-lapse tab. Open it and make sure the time-lapse is enabled. For the camera, select Magneto X. Go into the Orca Slicer, Printer Settings, Machine G-Code, before layer change G-Code, and type in time-lapse take frame. The next time you print a part, you should see a saved video file of the time-lapse. In order to download the file to your computer, click on the right corner of the video, the download button. In my next video, I'll continue to test other high temperature materials and continue to optimize the quality of the prints, as well as testing the Jetstream fan on PLA parts. So tell me in the comments below what tests you'd like me to perform and what materials you'd like me to run. If you found this video useful, I would really appreciate it if you would click on the like button and consider subscribing to my channel for future content. Thanks for watching. Bye.